Good afternoon, Metanistas. Welcome to Burnage, or Burnage as some of the locals call it, in South Manchester. Now, for once, I'm bearing bad news for you. This is going to be my last football vlog for, I think, about seven weeks. I'm away on business, unfortunately, during that period. And when I get back, there are a couple of games where it's going to be very difficult for me to get tickets anyway. So let's make this a good one for the visit of Chelsea in the Premier League. Last time out it was 4-4. I'm expecting and hoping for something a little more sedate this time. Join me for the vlog. Right, Metanistas, today we're going to do things the other way round. I'm going to pop into my local first because I've had a good breakfast, build up my match fitness here, and then take you for a food segment that some of you have been crying out for me to try. Anyway, I'm itching for a pint of my favourite British porter, London Black. Let's head in because it's starting to rain. What a surprise in Manchester. Yes, not too bad. London black as usual. <laughs> okay, as always, Mutton Easters, when I'm unsure, there's only one beverage I'm going to order, London black. I do actually like some of the kegs here as well, I must admit, and they are very well kept. Anyway, I'd better quality control this, even though I've no doubt it'll be on form. Mm, on form it is, and Metanistas, I can pronounce myself match fit. Well, this is drinking well, Metanistas, and coincidentally, this was what I was on for the away game against Chelsea. Do you remember that 4-4 draw? Some shocking defending by City amongst some very sharp attacking play. And I did go to the tap room for London Black, the Arch House in Bermondsey. Check that out if you're down there. Anyway, on for today. I keep saying this and things keep getting sweaty and we can see the odd loose goal from nowhere, but I think this is going to be comfortable for City. Chelsea, a bit of an enigma. They have put in some good performances, as they did against City, but a lot of really scruffy ones as well. And I think we're going to have too much for them. We do have three injuries, Jack Grealish, Bernardo Silva and Josco Gradiol. Gradiol's out for a while, I think. Not quite sure about Grealish and Bernardo. I think Bernardo will just be a game or two. Anyway, we have able deputies in the form of Jeremy Doku. Nathan Ake can fit in at left-back. And I'm pretty sure that either Nunes or Kovacic will fill in ably. I think Kevin De Bruyne on red-hot form. I hope he starts today, and if he does and he keeps up his form, I don't think Chelsea will have any answer to it. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy my beer here, and I'll see you a bit later for the pre-match meal and the team news. Come on, City. Right, Metanistas, time for the food segment and a place that some of you have been urging me to go to and even berating me for not having been to. Yes, the Levenzoom Bakery in Levenzoom in a district or suburb of Manchester. I've been told their shawarmas are excellent and I should go for the Samoon bread, a Kurdish bread, as opposed to a naan or wrap. Now, it looks to me as if the lamb shawarma's all gone and it's donna or chicken shawarma, so I'll obviously have chicken. I am expecting great things, Matanistas, so I really do hope that this place lives up to its billing. <laughs> Thank you.
Right, very, very quickly served, and obviously I went for the spiciest sauce they could offer. So the bread is very interesting. I've had it before, a samoon, a type of Kurdish bread. I must admit, I prefer the nuns or rats, actually, but it's perfectly pleasant. I think if you like it a bit heavier and doughier, this is a better bet. As for the filling, the chicken, it's good. It's very good. It's not like the best I've ever had. I have to admit the ones I've had on the Edgware Road are better. But for Manchester, I'd say this is a pretty good bet. Although I have had better in Manchester. And apparently to get the lamb, you've got to come here really early. Somebody said even breakfast time. Well, I'm not going to do that. But I'll rock up sometime maybe at lunchtime. Even for a 12.30 kickoff at 11 or something like that and see if I can get some of the lamb because this is very good and I think all the high praise for this kebab shop is probably coming from the lamb. I guess there's a reason why it's sold out. And hey Matanistas, as I bite through the kebab it's getting better and better and I'm really loving their chilli sauce, properly spicy. So Matanistas, that was a pretty tasty pre-match feed, quite filling as well and probably one of the cheapest pre-match food segments I've ever filmed. 4 50 for the kebab and a pound for the water. Anyway, the team news is out. I'm not going to talk much about Chelsea, although they have Nicholas Jackson up front with Raheem Sterling and Cole Palmer, two ex-City players. And Jackson hasn't set the world alight. They have Nkunku on the bench, who I do rate as a striker. Not sure whether he's just coming back from injury or whether he's fallen out of favour. They do seem to have quite a lot of injuries, but they also have a hell of a lot of registered players. As for City, Ake and Walker in the full-back positions, as I suspected. And Johnny Stones drops out today. We have Diaz and Akanji filling the central defensive roles. Rodri, of course, we cannot do without him. Kevin De Bruyne. And I was wondering whether in place of Bernardo, maybe Kovacic would start, but Pep has gone attacking and we have Alvarez, Foden, Doku and Erling Haaland. So I doubt this is going to be a nil-nil draw, folks. In fact, it's a long time since I did actually see City play in a nil-nil draw. I'm going to head off to the stadium and I'm in plenty of time today, so should get a pre-kickoff pint. Well, I often say that and it doesn't happen, but I think it will today. As predicted, Mutton Easters, time for a pre-match pint. And whilst the lager is quite decent, it's lager. That's the reason why I don't get here particularly early, normally on match days. I think it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze where I stand. Yes, officially I have a seat, but it's the safe standing area. And it's so wet, you can bet your bottom dollar that too many people will try and crowd into the areas where it is just about covered from the rain. Twenty-four in City have been a little bit sloppy with their passing today. Don't know if it's the wet surface, but doesn't seem to have affected Chelsea that much. Who have had some sustained periods of possession and some very dangerous counter attacks. I think we need to move up a gear here.
well, more sloppy passing from City. De Bruyne this time, who's hardly been in the game. He lost the ball. We never got control of it. Swift break down the right. Nobody could keep pace with Sterling. And for once in his life, unfortunately, he finished. City nil, Chelsea won. We've got to do better than this. I think Johnny Stones on at half-time might be a good idea. Oh. Half time, City nil, Chelsea won, and a bit of a double whammy there. First of all, my coverage of the goal was bad and we're losing at half time. I thought City were very sloppy there. Not that Chelsea were any great shakes, but one thing Chelsea did very well was to have Gallagher very tight on Rodri or go. It's something I've been saying teams should be doing, but it's the first time I've really seen somebody stay as tight as glue on Rodri. Otherwise, a lot of sloppy passing. Kevin De Bruyne in particular, I mean, this is the worst game I've seen him have since he's come back, but maybe he'll have a good second half. Jeremy Doku, terrible in the air. This is the first time I've seen him as badly exposed as that. And I'd like to think that in training, he can maybe get to grips with that. He's had the ball out wide quite a lot, but he's not been able to do anything with it usually slowed the game down a little bit too much and Chelsea always had two men on it. We've conceded a lot of first half goals, equalisers, the first goal sometimes and we've come back all the time so let's hope that's the case. Let's hope Kevin De Bruyne gets his boots on, maybe it's the wet grass or maybe it's just fatigue from the Champions League game but City are not at the races and we need better in the second half. Come on City, We've done this before, we've done it a lot recently, we can do it today. and pressure on the ball here. getting frustrated some good openings we've got behind them a couple of times bad final ball Bernardo who I thought was injured has just come on for Alvarez who unfortunately was a bit ineffective today Only 10 minutes left for stoppage time. Don't see where a goal's coming from, but a mistake from them, a piece of brilliance, you never know. Yeah! Well, City have been huffing and puffing and eventually the breakthrough game. A couple of shots blocked. Eventually came to Rodri, who slammed it home. OK, yes, it took a deflection, but when he's needed, Rodri's the man who pops up.
no, no penalty. Right, Matanistas, before I go and finish the football vlog at the Northern Mug, a little bonus for you. A pub that used to be called the Beer Next Republic has now become the Pelican Craft Beer Bar. I've gone for the single hot ale. I can't work out what hop it is, and I have to say, it looks very cloudy for something that's not hazy. Secession Ale doesn't have enough flavour for me. Perfectly pleasant, very lightly hopped, a bit like hot juice though, so not for me this one, but I will drink it. It's not at all undrinkable, and I'm guessing some of you will like this style of beer. Right, Mutton Easters, it feels like I haven't been to the Monk for an eternity, and I've got an old favourite here, Eternal Session IPA. Beautiful and hoppy as always. Cask, they do have a keg option, but you know me, Matamistas, I'm old fashioned, I like my cask. Anyway, on to the game and that rather sorry performance from City today. But before I get on to how City played, I want to point out that Chelsea, I thought, actually did play pretty well. They defended well. Conor Gallagher did a superb job on Rodri, which I think is a good tactic. And, most importantly, they broke well. Had their finishing been a bit better, I think they actually could have won the game. What I don't get is we played so, so well in Copenhagen. We played well away at Brentford. I know the performance against Everton was a little stodgy. But why this today? Was it the rain? I know some of the passes weren't true, but Chelsea managed to deal with it. Was it the fact that we just come back from Europe? I know sometimes teams give sluggish performances a few days after they played away in Europe, but too many players were having bad days at the office. Erling Haaland, for one, I mean, we had so many shots, he couldn't stick one away. I know some of the chances were too difficult because the pass wasn't weighted correctly. Too many of the attempted assists didn't go to the right player or didn't go anywhere. Let's not forget, passing to Haaland when he's got two men on him might not always be the most productive thing. De Bruyne really wasn't there. OK, he helped set up a massive counter-attack, which should have been finished, but he was partly responsible... Well, he was responsible for setting up the move that got Chelsea their goal. I didn't like the way that Walker again managed to get turned and allow somebody to curl the ball outside him. It happened twice against Newcastle, and it happened again today. OK, maybe you think I'm being a bit harsh. People who know more about the defensive arts the game can tell me I'm talking rubbish but that's the way it looks to me and Jeremy Doku in particular had an absolute stinker today he got into a lot of good positions found a lot of space and did absolutely nothing he was terrible in the air allowed the ball to bounce over him couldn't jump high enough he got free on the wings could never could put a good ball in and generally either ran down blind alleys or didn't put his cross in quickly enough so by the time he'd set himself yet again two men on him and we needed Rodri to bail us out yet again now a lot of you will say oh jammy deflection and what have you but I think that ball was going in okay I was at the other end so I couldn't be sure and the deflection didn't matter but with Arsenal and Liverpool going ahead full steam, we have to do better than this. The result isn't terminal by any means. I remember last season we drew away from Forest just after we'd beaten Arsenal, and that was, but it felt as disappointing as it does today. Now, before I wrap things up, on to my own plans. Unfortunately, from Monday, I am away for quite a long time, until Easter, until just after Easter. So, unfortunately, there won't be any games I can go to until after Easter. I'm not sure what the first game actually is, 
that there won't be anything till then. I do have a couple of beer blogs in the pipeline, and I'll be going to China as well, and I'll try and do a food blog or two whilst I'm there. Whether I can upload them or not with that massive internet wall over there, I don't know. I do have a VPN. So please stay with me, Mutton Easters. I'll be back at the football matches as soon as I can. But until then, I'm going to love you and leave you. Please remember to keep liking, keep subscribing, keep sharing. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.